Hi, I'm Tim Flaston. I'm in the bacteriology department. Um, so I've been teaching a number of different classes over the years. This is my 26th year here. And so I heard about Canvas. I heard good things about it and decided to try it for my Micro 527 because, which is a laboratory class where the students do lots of writing. And I wanted them to evaluate each other's writing. And I heard that Canvas had really good peer-to-peer -to -peer tools. So I then decided to use it and was really happy about it. So I wanted to give a little bit of the background in that my learning outcome was I wanted people, students to be able to read, edit, and critically evaluate all their students' writing in their own writing. Because you know, one of the weaknesses I've always seen in our classes up until we made this change about three years ago is that students there were always the good students that would write great lab reports. And then there was a collection that would do okay, and then the people that do really poorly. And they didn't really understand or seem to gain an understanding of what they're doing. So I have a friend, Julie Reynolds, at Duke University, and she came up with the BioTap program. And two things I took from that. Number one is that we are making students write too much. That you're getting quantity over quality. And that because of that, they were just cranking out the stuff to give to you and they weren't really analyzing their stuff and thinking about how to improve it. And number two, they weren't editing. A lot of the time, these reports would be written at the last minute, you know, like an hour or four hours before they're due, and there's no editing going on. And I really want to encourage students to do that. So this is a lot of background to where Canvas gets in, but I think it's important. So a few years ago, we cut down the writing and we simplified <coughs> greatly the assignments in that we had six experiments and then we had one major lab, lab report. That's the new format. The old format, we had six major lab reports. So we cut it down and students struggle with making good, taking their data and making good graphs. Make, just presenting that data well, making good decisions on how to present it and how to describe it. They also struggle with analyzing data. So I wanted them to have numerous opportunities to do that. So every six of the seven that we did, they were required to do that. They had to make, take the data, put it, present it correctly, and then analyze it. So those two pieces, and that's, that's the lab analysis. And then we spent a lot of time with the major experiment of the class, the big report, and talking about each section. We'd show them a report, right? We'd show them a journal paper and the abstract from it and say, okay, read this. Tell me what's good about it and what's bad about it. We'd give them a rubric, et cetera, et cetera. The same rubric they used for the class. And we'd have them look at that. And then the next time they'd practice and analyze and peer review. So we did that for discussion, we did that for abstract, we did that for introduction, we did that for results, we did that for discussion. So we did it for all of them, and this is where the peer-to-peer -peer grading went in. So the first couple of times we did this, we'd have them bring in their assignments, and they would then take those assignments and hand them off to somebody else, and e each of them would evaluate it, and then hand it back. And we did that in class, but what I found is two things. One, there was no accountability, because I didn't see them, unless I was going to hand them all in, and their, their class was 100 students, and I did have them hand them in, but they're just, because it was, they knew it was going to appear and not to me, and I wasn't going to see it until afterward, they didn't worry about it so much or whatever, and so a lot of time they wouldn't put a lot of effort into the first draft. The second thing that we saw is when the students would evaluate it, even though we gave them a rubric, it would be like, oh, looks good, and they'd like, edit the, the little comments, you know, like, oh, you spelled, you spelled this word, and you need a comment here, and stuff like that. And that's not what we really wanted. So I wanted an easier way to handle it logistically. So I wanted accountability. I wanted a logistically easier way to handle it. And I wanted them to maybe take it a little more seriously. So I didn't know that Canvas was going to help me with that last part, but I ended up doing it. So what I did is I use Canvas, and here is the class, Micro 527. And then here's all the different assignments, and we're going to look at the discussion exercise. So when you set up an assignment, you go in, and I can show you this on here. OK. And I click 
click on that and I'll click on edit. Alright. Gonna be looking at discussions. You say hand in online and text entry for file uploads. So most people do uploads. A nice feature of Canvas is you can restrict what extensions you allow so you don't get all sorts of goofy stuff being handed in. And then you just check off, require peer reviews, <laughs> automatically assign peer reviews, and then two reviews per user. And this is really nice because two people looked at your paper, so each student was required to do two reviews. And then the due date is set. Okay, the due date is down here. It's September 26th at 3 p.m. The peer reviews are then assigned at 3.15 p.m. It does it just instantly. So that's all. one of the things I love about um, technology and one of the things I think it's most appropriately used for is that when it makes busy work effortless. That's a whole bunch of sorting and handing out papers and figuring things out I don't have to do and I can focus on the stuff that I want, which is their grading. So this worked pretty well and here's how it um, looks to them. If I, so this is my interface. And then the rubric is attached. These are all gone to, attached to learning outcomes for the class. And then this is a discussion, so the parts of it are summary of experimental findings, analysis of data, conceptual understanding, organization, spelling, grammar, and style, and then citation. And it, it points out that the stuff that they normally focus on is only worth five points. So you got to want to look at all the other stuff and you want to look at the analysis. They can click on the rubrics here and it will tell them exactly what they're looking for. And I like using rubrics this way instead of like the other classic way you see rubrics written is you'll say like what your best one looks like for exceeds expectation then you write kind of what it looks like if it meets expectations, et cetera, et cetera. I find it's a little easier for them to understand because what happens if you write it where you have a description of each one looks like, of course, student writing is very different, right? And then they'll have something that doesn't, it's a square peg and it doesn't fit the round holes you have designed. So by having just one description, like for analysis of data, <coughs> it's like what the best thing is going to be able to do, and then just saying, okay, how well did they hit that? It makes it a lot easier for them to do and for them to understand. Right, so when they go in, if, if I go to peer reviews and click on that interface, okay, each person, I can go in here and check if they did it, just like that. So very quickly it tells me if it's got a check mark with it, apply it, you can do this, and then you can bug the students that haven't done it if it hasn't been turned in. The other thing is they realize since this was going online, all of a sudden they took it way more seriously. Oh, this is going to be permanent. I don't want other people to see it. Some terrible job I did, so they took it a lot more seriously. And then if we go look at one, so we'll look at just here. And if you go into the speed grader, you can look at <coughs> feedback. Okay, and of course, it's all it doesn't have feedback. Right, let's see if I can find one that does. That's the word you're going to take. Okay, so you can see the feedback over here. I'm sorry, it was over here on the right. Uh, you can look at the rubrics and how they score the rubrics. So here's how Emily Arnold scored it. Okay. <coughs> and then you can see how Kennedy Booth so scored it. And one of the other things that you can do is if you have two reviewers, you can check and make sure that they reasonably match one another. And if they don't, then you can go look at them and say, okay, who's right and who's wrong. So and one, I, one yeah. point on that, in the Crocodoc view with that view feedback thing, yeah. that shows the yeah. comments that they made in Crocodoc, yeah. whereas on the side it was the comments that they made Else outside yeah. of the crocodile. Yeah, so yeah, so yeah, that's out uh, yeah, crocodile and this is outside. And then also I gave students the option of downloading this. So let's get out of the rubric. Okay. 
Okay. And I it gave him the option of uploading it and attaching the file. So sometimes they downloaded it and then uploaded it. Yeah, so this is in Croc Doc, and I guess these students didn't use it. So this way the students really got some good feedback and later on in there they got more and more into it. And they would they started making, you know, critiques of them, they would say, you know, this doesn't make sense, you didn't analyze this correctly, so they really started focusing on the content. Yes? Crop up time. Let's see if I get this right from your comment. These comments are the ones that pop up rubric and little place for them to show. Crop is when I actually edit the document. Yep. Yeah. yeah, so that's what I tried. So how did I feel about it? This is very successful. I felt like the students took this assignment more seriously because of using it and that it took away a lot of the things that I didn't like, you know, just the handing out the busy work, et cetera, et cetera. What I would do differently? Boy, not much. I was, I'm really happy with the system. I think Canvas really has solved this and, and made it much easier. It, it's seamless to deal with students handing things in. One issue you do run into is sometimes you'll have students um, come late. So if they, if they don't hand the thing in until the 315 cutoff, then they're kind of cut out. And you can put them in later, but then it's really difficult to get the other student to review it because it came in later, et cetera, et cetera. So I might make the, the cutoff like write a thing, or I might have, I might put more points on review. So they did get points as part of participation for review but it was kind of abstract and they didn't realize whether they were losing points or not until the end of the semester. So I think I'd make it more clear to them that they need to always do the reviews and follow up, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. 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 Ye